Buckle up, boys, girls, and others, because we're off on a quest to find the very best games from a particular 12-month period in history, and today we're on the lookout for titles from the year 2018. Don't worry if you left your binoculars at home, though, because they won't be all that hard to spot on account of the fact that there are so bloody many of them. Honestly, you couldn't move in 2018 for good video games. As is always the case for these best of X year lists, before we get going, we must first remind you all of the rules. A game can qualify for this list if it was released in 2018 in at least one territory and received a minimum of seven professional reviews. Ports, re-releases, and collections don't count. The remakes and remasters are fair game, and where aggregators, Metacritic, and game rankings have different average review scores on record, then we go with whichever score is higher. You got all that? Then let's get to it. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best games of 2018. Number 10. Tetris Effect, 90.72%. The original Tetris debuted in the USSR all the way back in 1985, but is, shockingly, still somewhat popular to this very day, with variants popping up everywhere from home consoles to graphics calculators. One of the more recent and best iterations of the game is Tetris Effect, originally released for the PS4 in 2018 before making its way to various other consoles and PC in the years since. As is the case in the original, the aim of Tetris Effect is to carefully stack differently shaped coloured blocks, known as tetrominoes, in order to complete lines, which are then cleared from the play area. Tetris Effect didn't earn critical acclaim by being the same as its predecessors, though, and the title adds new themes and music to the mix, gameplay that's tied to the beat of said music, and a stop-time mechanic that gives players the opportunity to clear more than four rows at once. The game was met with an incredibly warm response from both critics and players, and received commendation for sticking faithfully to the tried-and-true Tetris formula whilst innovating enough to keep things fresh for a modern audience. Number 9. Astrobot Rescue Mission 90.87% if you like adorable, friendly robots, platform video games, and motion sickness, then oh boy, or girl or other, are you going to enjoy this next entry. Released exclusively for PSVR in October 2018, Astrobot Rescue Mission takes place across five separate worlds and tasks players with saving Astro's 213 robot friends. Crikey, it must take him ages to write all of his Christmas cards. In order to traverse each of the 20 levels, players will need to carefully jump between platforms and keep their eyes and ears peeled for their robotic pals. Players can also use the audio to locate space chameleons, and if found, these unlock special bonus challenges, effectively doubling the amount of content in the game. Critics showered the game with praise, applauding its immersive and innovative gameplay, excellent audio-visual presentation, tight controls, and well-thought-out level design, all of which kept them coming back for more. For a time, Astrobot Rescue Mission held the title of highest-rated VR game ever, though it has since been surpassed by Half-Life Alex and Beat Saber. It's still a great little platformer, though, as long as you've got a strong stomach. Number 8. Monster Hunter World 91% the Monster Hunter series has been around since 2004, delivering RPG excellence to fans the world over, but out of all of the Monster Hunter titles in existence, arguably the very best is Monster Hunter World. Released for PS4 and Xbox One in January 2018, and for PC in August of the same year, Monster Hunter World follows the player named Hunter as they track down and either trap or kill monsters in exchange for rewards. With the loot they earn from the titular monster hunting, players can build better equipment that would allow them to take on even more powerful beasts, which will, in turn, earn them even better loot, and thus the cycle continues. Though some critics were dubious of Monster Hunter World's steep learning curve, which was overcome to a degree by the community-led Adopt-a-Hunter program that paired experienced players with new ones, overall, the game was very well received. Monster Hunter World's… Uh, world was lauded, as was the core gameplay loop, loot and upgrade systems, combat, and the bestiary of interesting creatures. If you're able to crack the mechanics of the title, then there's a whole world of fun to be had. Sorry. Number 7. Dead Cells 91% before you ask, no, Dead Cells isn't a game about the battery on your mobile phone running out, but is, in fact, a roguelike Metroidvania from French studio Motion Twin. The player character is an amorphous creature known only as the Prisoner, no, not that one, who has the ability to possess corpses, but although his head is immortal, the bodies he inhabits are not, and should they be killed, he's returned to the prisoner's quarters and must find a new corpse to make his home. By possessing dead bodies, the Prisoner is able to explore the island on which the game is set, with the ultimate goal being to kill its 
king. Can't beat a classic bit of regicide, can you? Dead Cells drew favourable comparisons to the likes of Dark Souls, Diablo and the Castlevania series thanks to the level of challenge that it presented to players and the ever-changing layout of its levels. Critics were also quick to compliment the game's premise, fluid combat and the rewarding permadeath system. Dead Cells is a game that takes a serious amount of patience, so isn't for everyone. But what it is, is one of the best modern roguelikes out there. Number 6. Forza Horizon 4 92.24% Oh yeah, here we go, sports time! Can motor racing be considered a sport? Well, according to Google, yes it can. And I don't need any more excuses than that to get in a sports time. Oh yeah, right, blah blah blah, I'm gonna give this everything I've got, let's go. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to drive around Britain, the reasonably nice parts, not places like Blackbird Lees, sorry Blackbird Lees, then you could either fly out here and rent a car at great personal expense, or you could give Forza Horizon 4 a go. The title is set in a fictionalised version of Great Britain and gives players the chance to race in locations locations like the Lake District, the Scottish Highlands and Edinburgh, plus lets them create their own routes and affords them the opportunity to explore the landscape in different seasons. Like its predecessors, Forza Horizon 4 received critical acclaim upon its release, and in particular praise was directed towards the introduction of the Seasons mechanic, which added an additional layer of complexity to the gameplay. The wide variety of vehicles and events was also complemented, as was the custom course functionality. Some critics did accuse the British setting of being less interesting than the Australian one in Horizon 3, but those critics were, in my humble, English opinion, wrong. I haven't played the game. Number 5. Shadow of the Colossus 92.27% no, you don't have deja vu, this is indeed the second time that a game by the name of Shadow of the Colossus has featured on one of these lists, only this time we're looking at the remake. In terms of its story, the 2018 remake of Shadow of the Colossus is identical to the 2005 version. The game's protagonist is Wanda, a man who travels to an isolated part of the realm in order to find a way to revive the fair maiden Mono. In an attempt to ensure her resurrection, he follows the instructions of Dormin to slay the 16 colossi that are spread across the landscape. Throughout the game, players must explore the land in order to find the Colossi, which are generally in hard-to-reach places like the middle of a lake or within ancient structures, then find their weak points, signified by a glowing sigil, and find out a way to scale them in order to defeat them. And by defeat them we mean stab them over and over and over and over and over. Upon its release, Shadow of the Colossus garnered universal critical acclaim, receiving praise for its intriguing story, the improvements made to its control scheme, and the new assets which made the already stunning game even more beautiful. Number 4. Super Smash Bros Ultimate 93% do you and your friends constantly find yourself debating who would win in a fight between Samus Aran and Pikachu? Well, then you need a little bit of Super Smash Bros in your lives. Super Smash Bros Ultimate's gameplay is much like its predecessors. Players pick a character and a stage and then duke it out, either against other players or the computer, to try and throw their opponents out of the arena. The base game features a whopping 74 characters for players to choose from, hailing from both Nintendo properties and third-party ones, and a mighty 104 different stages. Plus additional characters and arenas are available in DLC. With a review score of 93 out of 100, Super Smash Bros Ultimate is the joint highest scoring Super Smash Bros title alongside Brawl. Critics were impressed by the improvements made to the gameplay since previous installments, the massive roster of characters and wide variety of stages available, and the soundtrack. The game did catch a little bit of flack for its wobbly online matchmaking, but let's face it, Super Smash Bros is for parties, so some slightly wonky online functionality isn't a deal breaker, is it? Number 3. Celeste, 94%. These days it feels like you can't move for indie platformers and it takes something really special to stand out from the crowd. One such game that does just that is Celeste, a game that's about so much more than just climbing a mountain. In Celeste, players take control of Madeline, a young woman suffering from anxiety and depression who sets out on a journey to climb the titular mountain. Along the way, she meets a variety of characters including Badeline, the personification of all of her feelings of self-doubt who tries to thwart her attempts to reach the summit. Like in a traditional platformer, the gameplay in Celeste will see players running, jumping and climbing across levels in order to reach the end goal. Optional challenges and hidden collectibles are dotted throughout the game and a whole bunch of accessibility options are available for those who need a little helping hand. The gameplay, graphics and sound were all lauded by critics, but it was the game's narrative and overall message that set it apart from its peers as it presented a story that so many can relate to on a personal level. Number 2. God of War 94.1% 
Here's a fun fact for you. With the exception of God of War Ascension, which was still half decent, every mainline God of War title, that is God of War, God of War 2, God of War 3, God of War 2018, and God of War Ragnarok, has made its way onto the best of list for its respective year. Not sure about the PSP ones, though. Honestly, we don't know how Santa Monica Studio keep doing it, but we salute them for their efforts. 2018's God of War eschews the ancient Greek setting of its predecessors, and we catch up with Kratos in the oldie Norse times following the death of his wife. Along with his son Atreus, Kratos sets out on a journey to scatter his wife's ashes from atop the highest peak in the Nine Realms, though naturally he makes a few enemies along the way. In this third-person adventure, players control Kratos as he explores, solves puzzles, and battles his way through a variety of foes using combo-based attacks. His main weapon is the Leviathan Axe, which can be upgraded over time using different runes and he can protect himself using the Guardian Shield. God of War garnered universal critical acclaim, with critics praising the story, graphics, art direction, combat, music, characters, and just about anything else about the game that you could possibly think of, to be honest. Phenomenal game. Play it. Number 1. Red Dead Redemption 2 97.44% it took a whopping eight years for fans of the original Grand Theft Horse to get a follow-up, but I think most would agree that Red Dead Redemption 2 was well worth the wait. In this Rootin' Tootin' prequel, players step into the cowboy boots of Arthur Morgan, a member of the Vanderlind gang who's trying to make his way in the Old West the only way he knows how. Crime. Sadly, with the advancement of society, Outlaw's days are numbered and the gang decides to try to scrounge up enough money to retire. Red Dead Redemption 2 is set in a stunning, sprawling open world that's filled with interest interesting, friendly NPCs and a wide variety of fearsome foes. Follow the main story, pick up a few side quests, or just kick back with a few rounds of cards. The Wild West truly is your oyster. Critics were blown away by Red Dead Redemption 2, showering praise upon everything from its masterfully crafted story and heart-rending conclusion to its beautiful graphics and atmospheric soundtrack. So, congratulations to you, Red Dead Redemption 2, for being the very best video game of 2018. Holster that six-shooter, kick off your boot, and pour yourself a celebratory glass of bourbon. You've earned it.